Alright, so I am working on a Atherin Challenger with soundtracks in it that somebody sent in. And this is a pretty much a brand new engine, uh, at least according to the customer. And uh, I was claiming it's doing all sorts of screwy things and uh, doesn't sound good. Now, I can get it to work. I reset the decoder and it does work, but it has continuity and pickup issues. So I started to dismantle it a little bit. One of the things I noticed is I started to work on the tender. This is as far as I've gotten so far. But these are little bearings that are supposed to press in the back. I don't know if I can get this to zoom in. Yeah, press in the back of the wheel sets. Because I noticed, you know, you rock this thing on the track back and forth and you could kind of get it to reset and what have you. And basically what's happening is like, these aren't even <sighs> set so they will actually touch the back of the wheel sets. Like they need to be adjusted. So I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit better here. It might be kind of difficult. You see the same... Yeah, focus, focus, focus. Same problem on the other side. All these contacts are mutilated here. So you've already lost half your pickup there. So I believe there's pickup in the up here too. So I will eventually dismantle and work on that. But step one is actually getting the pickup working correctly regardless of what I do whether or not I keep this decoder or switch it to low sound or something like that the other thing that's going to have to be addressed is the customer said that there was no headlight it turns out the headlight actually does work on there but it is so dim I had to turn off the light in the shop and really stare in that so at bare minimum that either needs to be re-aimed or replaced with another 0402 LED or dropping resistor value has to be changed or something but like it's how it left the factory like this i don't know but yeah this is gonna be interesting so after figuring out how to dismantle this thing thankfully i was able to find an exploded diagram and figure out where all the screws are we will get the board off and of course there's a proprietary board in here which you know all the wires are black. I'm sure I can trace back and figure out if I rewire this. Looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six wires coming off. Um, obviously, two are going to be for the headlight and maybe two for each motor. I don't know if there's two motors on here or there's just one motor. And if there's a cab light or something in there. The other thing I'm kind of surprised is that for as large as this locomotive is, there's just this small speaker in here. So... We'll see what we can do here. I gotta dig all this stuff out just so I can get down to the contacts to properly repair them so that we have appropriate pickup from those wheel sets. And then we start moving into other aspects of the locomotive. I'm sure this will be a huge time suck. So, in pulling this apart so I could rebend the contacts, one thing that's interesting this whole pickup is supposed to come apart like a sub assembly. But. The one next to it, somebody had glued from the bottom, probably the factory, because that's crazy glue. The top cover came off, but I can't pop these off, at least easily, so I can adjust the contacts easily. So I'm going to have to come up with something special there. But yeah, that would explain why some of this funky wiring in the tender, why the pickups weren't working. All right, so you can see where the glue mark was that was holding that piece down. I was able to pop him up with an X-Acto knife blade. You know, it's like they tacked that there, but there was a screw to hold everything in place, so who knows. Moving over to here, I've actually figured out which of There's three wires besides the pickups coming here. One's motor left, motor right, and then the other one's going to be for your forward headlight. And then I believe they just go back to neutral or ground i'm not entirely sure how they do that with just one wire i know you can do it but wouldn't be my preferred method but neither here nor there let's uh dig into this thing further and try to i'm going to start actually repairing the contacts in here and put this tender back together so it's just not in multiple pieces because i got like 700 screws loose right now i mean i got a screw loose in my head for even working on this stupid thing but we'll see what we can do all right, so what I have here is the front 
articulated assembly and I just spent like the last half hour getting this guy pulled apart and put back together to remove that little light bulb there replace it with a small LED that will run through everything and we'll run this back through here and we'll start putting a sound decoder in here this uh, took way too long to get back together <laughs> You can see there I just got some test leads hooked up to that and I've got this front articulated truck almost back together but you can see where you can actually see the headlight now which is a good start and then I think what we're gonna do here talk to the owner we talked about what we were gonna do with this thing originally we were gonna just try to make this thing sound okay um, so this is the original tsunami board in there it's from December of 2009 so I mean it's you know 13 years out of date 12 years out of date so we are going to replace it with a v5 micro that we're gonna wire in and then since we got this space back here we'll put a dual sugar cube speaker in there I believe so we'll see what we can do on oh, a rear light while we're in there because so the back of the tsunami board has a surface mount diode for the rear light it wasn't very bright but it was still brighter than the forward headlight which was this tiny grain of wheat bulb all right continuing on with the challenger i've got a decoder partially wired in here uh the v5 look sound looks kind of messy here we'll clean that all up a little bit more got that all routed and that was a major pain in the dick um so what I'm going to do here is there's a weight that fits over there on the original soundtracks board. There were capacitors back there. So that's why there's that, that cutout here. At least that's why I'm figuring that's why. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, I'm going to chuck this weight in my mill and I'm going to flatten this out. That way I can fit a dual sugar cube set up and it should clear i mean i could just leave the weight out but i want to maintain some of that so and then i'll wire up a rear headlight and some other stuff on here so we'll see how this goes all right so i have the motor and the contacts hooked up i do not have the uh lights hooked up yet i'll do that afterwards we want to just test function and make sure i actually installed things correctly here but so i am going to hit power and we have sound i need to machine this this weight out here so this dual sugar cube will fit in there too still but that won't take long i just got to get out into the shop to do that i'll also turn down that dual dynamo because i think that's a little loud just like the fef3 so we will Oops, wrong way. I meant to actually go in reverse. There we go. And it's alive. After way too much work. There's more weights that fit in there that'll help with that once I get this all back together. Alright, so I've got the weight from the Challenger clamped in here. I'm going to skim all of that off. I'll remove this down. I'll probably remove a bit of this. And then when that's done, I'm going to take the little speaker housing weight and I'm going to machine him down so I can screw him back in the front, although there's going to be no speaker in there. The speaker's going to be back here. So we'll see what happens. So I'm back from my other shop, which has the mill in it. I've taken and I've cut this guy down. So I still have some weight in here. And then this guy no longer has that weird, weird bevel right there. And just a beautiful side note is this dual sugar, sugar cube fits in there almost perfectly. I'll do a little bit of sanding and fitting, but that'll fit in there. So now all I need to do is run a resistor bank and connect the forward headlight and then for the rear headlight 
I'm gonna grab a scat, uh, scrap Kato whiteboard. I got tons of these things and I'll just cut this section off and I'll just use this uh, surface mount LED for the rear light. And so this thing is starting to get closer to done. Hopefully, you know, knock on wood and all that stuff. All right, so I've got the rear light wired in. That's your yellow and your blue common. There's a dropping resistor. That was just a chunk of that board. And then the white one is your forward headlight. That's just temporarily tacked there. And then there's a little chunk of uh, old PCB with a dropping resistor there. And the reason I haven't shortened this yet is because I got a 50-50 chance on whether or not I have this backwards. So I want to throw it on the test track and make sure that works. But it does look like everything will actually fit down neatly in there. Now I made a little standoff here so the LED is a little bit higher. These are um, when I was experimenting with printing different speaker housing sizes. I have a whole bunch of ones that I'll never use. So it was about the right size. So I just glued it on there and it'll bring it to the right height. So we'll throw this on the test track and see what happens. All right. So looks like I got all the lighting worked out and some leads shortened down. It's a little messier in the tender than I'd like, but you know, que sera sera, whatever will be, will be. Uh, nothing's touching anything. So. And so this thing definitely, uh, turn that off. All the lights work on it now. Rear lights on, forward lights on. It does actually move. You need some runtime to break in the contacts that have been sitting for like 10 years. Because there's a little oxidation and stuff on this thing. So we'll run him for a while and see what happens. Anyways, we get him back together and we'll throw him on the actual loop test track. We'll see what happens. All right, so he's not all the way back together, but uh, I have most of it back together. And of course, we're test running this every step of the way because I don't want to get all the way back done putting this guy together and have him have to rip him back apart. All right. Well, we have some final video of this Inscale Athern Challenger that uh, came in for some repair work and got... ESU Loke Sound installed to replace a uh, decoder that uh, didn't seem to do what the customer wanted it to do. So it is what it is. Um, so the big thing was obviously I had to run a new wire for the headlight up through here, which was kind of wanky figuring out how all this was put together. Not a big deal. Uh, machined the weights in the back so a dual sugar cube would fit in there. I uh, used ESU's Challenger sound file that they have that was recorded off of uh, UP Challenger before it was retired. And let's see, that's about it. I made a few tweaks to this, the sound so the, the bell and horn and chuff are a bit louder per the individual's request. And so let us get some sound. Throw the headlight on, which is nice and bright. You can actually see it now. And if that doesn't wake you up, I don't know what to tell you. Athern 
Challenger with ESU Loke Sound V5 Micro installed. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Have a great day.